welcome back to the 2023 Enclosure Build-Off where 10 amazing participants from all over the US and even from Canada this year are building to the best of their abilities four foot enclosures using only what has been donated by our sponsors and they only have six hours to do it. Let's go check in on them and see how their builds are going. Okay, everybody has grabbed their initial, I guess, grouping of products that they want to use for their build. So we're gonna go around and see what everybody's initial plans are. All right. So, John, uh, what, what, what's our plan? Your enclosure's All on right. the floor. Yeah, so we got the enclosure on the floor. We wanna put a background in first. So Kevin's okay. working out there on the background. Oh, that was the item you got yes, first. It nice. Right oh, it's dark, yeah. but it's look at him go. A piece. So we're gonna try to like make a desert cave scene. Ooh, nice. Not quite full cave, but like kind of half and half. And Got some special surprises to add to the little cave scene to make it very homey. And, uh, what species are you planning um, your We're mostly doing small geckos. Desert oh. geckos, desert skinks, desert species. Yeah. Do you know so most, most of the people did rainforest last year. Yep. Um, so we're looking to do something a little different. So there was two bags of sand. So I had to get those right away. So we got an excavator and the rest of sand. Oh, nice. So good grab. So we could grab those. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you. Okay, Mariah. Oh, you're painting. Wow. Damn. I've never seen somebody paint before. Wait, has somebody painted before? Maybe Hunter's painted before. Yeah, Hunter painted year one. That's yeah. kind of yeah. Wow. All right. Well, Mariah, do you have? Are you are you confident with your plans today? I'm fairly confident. I planned this out with my husband. So what I'm doing today is a Southern Utah themed build. Um, oh, okay. Southern Utah is one of my favorite places on earth and so I want to capture the beauty of the desert and the rock. Yeah. I'm really excited but I got to get this paint. Today. Yes, yes. Go for get it. Get as many layers down as I can. How is the start? Are you happy with what you collected as far as items go? You know what? I've, I collected so much stuff, I have no idea if, what I, if I'm going to use it or not. <laughs> you just grabbed? Have, my thing that I brought from home is the centerpiece of Ooh. of this um, gargoyle gecko enclosure. Oh. And so this was this was custom built. I had my buddy who's a, um, who's a special effects guy for, for movies, and he has a, a 3D printing company called the 3D Printing Department that he designed that and printed it for me. It's pretty crazy. Well, I wish you the best of luck. We'll check Thanks. in later. Thanks. Okay, next up is is Dave over here who Dave who's your plus one no time to talk no time Busy. to talk no. <laughs> is that is that Clint we brought Clint it, isn't that cheating no it isn't well, so here's the story so after last year's build off Clint calls me and he goes next year I want to be your partner and I was like Can you did such a that? terrible job I need to I've get over here I've done a terrible job for the past two years this year I'm in it to win it but here's the first thing I said to Clint was well if we win everybody's gonna say oh it's because of Clint not Dave I mean which I care about that much about but we have literally been talking about this design since last year's build off so what's your what's your personal item uh, we will reveal that at the end. Oh, oh I right. see how it is. We'll check that. Later. Fine, we'll leave it to you. Okay, next up is Joe with JSA Reptiles. Hello. Are you happy with what you grabbed at the beginning? I think so. Yeah? Yep. Ch change my mind later. I already cut one in half just to get make it more versatile because it's so big. Oh, nice. So Got to figure out the design and direction. Uh, do you have a species in mind for your build? Probably a ball python or like a, any snake. Any well, that would work. ball python. You are a ball python breeder, yep. so that, Makes sense. that checks out. <laughs> do you have a personal item from home? Sheena. <laughs> oh, nice. Yep. Okay. That, so that, the cage comes with Sheena? Yes. All right. <laughs> All right, Luke. Are you? Hello. Oh wow, Hi. you've got paint too. Nice. A lot of paint this year. Uh, yeah, there is. Oof, he oh. sanded it off. They took off their lid. Right. Yeah, we had. Oh my gosh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was just on its back. No, you took the lid off. What's your plan? Or is it a secret still? No. no. Okay. Do you want to go unveil it? Go. Yeah. Okay. So go oh. help, um, yeah. Oh, is Let's this see what your personal item is. This is our personal item. Oh. 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 oh my gosh. That is amazing. That is an epic. Is that from The Hobbit? This is Bilbo's house. These are other assorted hobbits houses. Oh my gosh! All right, that is, I think, the biggest personal item anyone's ever yes. brought. I can't wait <laughs> to is. see that inside of the enclosure. We fit it in yeah. already. So oh, you did. Thank you. You did the dry fit. That was the fear part. Wow. Is this gonna fit? All you know, right, well, we'll let you keep part of Middle Earth journeys. Hey, Morgan, Ontario Reptile Rescue. Um, are you happy 
happy with what you grabbed from the, the tables. I am. Okay. However, as the winner is three of us out of five wanted well, to grab the Refty Fogger. Fogger. And I was I was very tempted well, to fist fight well, Tyler and Dave for them. You should have. But that wouldn't I, be very I, I Canadian of me, so I didn't. <laughs> um, uh, so instead I settled Canadian. for this really nice black rock, and I'm hoping I can attach it to the side. And then my item from home, I made a background. Oh my gosh, that's epic too! It has a built-in water feature, so it'll cascade down here and then come down. Cool. And then there's a water reservoir here. We're gonna kind of wing it as we go. <laughs> Alright, I think everybody else is outside. I think so, yeah. yeah. Let's see what they're up to. Yeah. Uh, Dan, what are you up to? Oh, you're, you're foaming things in place. Yeah. So you grabbed a huge chunk of cork initially. Yes, I, I hit it under the table and then I dove for it afterwards because before I came, because I did my homework, I was like, I need like one big tree looking stump. And if I can get that, I'm good. And you got it. And I got it. Nice. So it should be okay. All right, well, we'll leave you to it. Thank you. I don't even have the head anymore because Maddie took it. So. Oh, you're just out here with a tool? Yeah. Why, why would you call me that? Hunter, what are... Oh, you found your background. Yeah, we're just waiting for it to dry right now. And then the plan, which could change three times before we're done. <laughs> it does right with now, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> as of right now, it's to cut, like, cut out spaces for my secret item from home, which was a suitcase full of slate rocks. Ooh. And then we're gonna stick them in there, then add more foam so that it'll have little ledges and yeah. shelves. Okay, back inside. Last but not least, Tyler and Maddie. Hello. Are you happy with what you grabbed from the cornucopia? Yes. Really? Okay. We mainly wanted. I hate it. Okay. I don't the trust fogger. The fogger. <laughs> yeah. yeah. People are gonna try to steal that unless you hide it. Yeah. Dave was being it. really sketchy. All right. Yeah. And your item from home is that a like custom bedroom? Yes. Yeah. So basically, this is like a sign that's gonna go on it. We're going for like a Pokemon gym <gasps> abandoned sort of thing. Oh, cool. It lights up. So there's gonna be a light behind us. It lights up. It fell off though, so we have to fix it. Oh, no. So something <laughs> always happens. At least there isn't foam in my hair this time. So <laughs> we still have the. There it is. Yeah, oh, the mark I left. <laughs> so yeah. I love the theme. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Best of luck. Thank you very much. <laughs>we held back one additional fogger. Yeah. And since it's so highly contested, they're gonna have to complete a challenge and the winner will get the last fogger for the builds today. Yeah. Okay, and that challenge is racing bearded dragons. So let's go tell them. If I could have everyone's attention just briefly here. Oh my God, We are releasing one more Repta fogger for the build. So if you do not have a fogger yet, and you would like to participate in an extra bonus challenge to win this fogger, follow us. All right, so here is how this bonus challenge is gonna work. You will each be picking one of our adoptable bearded dragons, and those are that's gonna be your racer. And we have our beginning or starting line right here. Finish line is right here, and we will be giving you some feeders. You have doobie roaches, mealworms, superworms, and hornworms to entice them to go. I picked Martha because she's very squirmy, and I hope that she's attracted to food. Dan? I correctly picked King King Dodongo because uh, he's angry, flattened himself out like a pancake, and I'm kind of hungry. I picked Nacho Cheese because he's a fire color, and he's gonna flash fire and be fast. I chose Long Nailed Lizzie because she's chunky. So I, like <laughs> I picked Blueberry because it was the smallest one, and I think it's the hungriest one. Perfect. Ooh. Okay, line up your dragons. Oh, this All right. is going poorly. Three, Three two, two, one, race! Come on! Go, go, go! go. I chose wrong. Oh, oh, oh male's going after male. Oh, no. Get the roach. Get the roach. Get the roach. Ah, the bearded Lord. dragon races. You were so mad. Get the roach. Go, Blueberry, go. Get the container. Yes, 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 yes. Look at all the food. Get the roach. Oh, wow. Let's go. We just have beef at the starting line. <laughs> I, I think Luke might have this. I think so. Uh oh. Uh oh. A second one in the heat. Oh. Yes, yes, come on, Come on,
Okay, we are at just after three o'clock, so we are halfway through the allotted times. We're gonna check in on everybody and see how their builds are going. Yeah, jump right over here, Pangea. All right, Pangea, John and Kevin, how is your build? It's going well, yeah. We're Looks like it's excited. coming along. Yeah. So we're gonna have a cozy little fire in the corner over here. And then we have our wooded section in the corner. And then it's separated by uh, this nice universal rock in the center, um, kind of giving this a cave feel over here. Ooh. Turned out pretty well. Yeah, you universal made rocks. a bonfire. Yeah, we made the bonfire. That is pretty excited sweet. about that. Wow. And then uh, it will glow. So. Okay, Joe, JSA, how is your build going? Oh, pretty good. I think. It's looking great, yeah. Oh, we got the full background? Yep. Jeez. I'm cool. loving it so far. Still working on final details? Or are yeah. We, you, yep. yeah. Okay, yep. okay. Uh, we'll let you finish that. Touch up some of the rock and stuff like that. Nice. I can't wait. Okay, Bob, how is your build going? Oh, you used uh, one of the substrate lips. Oh, yeah. I used a substrate lip. Um, yeah, I think it's going really well. I am really excited to potentially win the million dollars. Uh, <laughs> it's. This is, uh, I've never done any sort of million dollar competition before, and to be invited to the Snake Discovery million dollar build off Can is... Can get a million dollars too? Where does it, does it come from Dave's account? Oh yeah, it totally comes from Dave. Dave's sponsoring oh, this. Got yep. you, buddy. <laughs> okay, next, Dave looks like he's turned his into a vertical build. Yeah, he's making it for a green tree. So, oh. in previous years, I've taken liberties. And I thought those enclosures were awesome. They I were. loved your enclosures. They were so right? unique. Yeah. But this time, I gotta win, otherwise I'm not here next year. That's right, sure, championship right? is next year. So, it doesn't look like anything now, but seriously, Clint and I have been talking about this design for a year. Mm -hmm. So there's and a lot more involved. We than... haven't even begun to reveal what this is going to do and what this is going to be. But see this big round rock? That is your only hint as to what this is going to be. All right, Luke, how's your build going? It's going great so far. So we've added live moss to the whole thing. Um, these other houses were removed, but they have to go back in now. Oh. And then we painted the stairs here, actually, and the cobblestones and the fence. So you're really nice. focusing on your item from home with this yes. build. I like it. Strategy. Yeah. Okay, Ontario Reptile Rescue Boat. Doing our halfway Hello. checks. Halfway check. How is it going? Uh, Well, my water feature keeps leaking. Oh, no. Which is unfortunate, but I filled it with spray foam and I'm hoping for the best. There we go. And we're trying to fill in the foreground now, so we have a little bit of a tree, a faux tree going on here. Nice. Okay. And we're going to be attaching some of these. These were vines and I kind of clipped them to make them smaller. Perfect. We're gonna attach them to look like tree branches and then oh. glue some leaves on. Nice. nice. I'm hoping that works out, but. I feel we'll like see. every year people step up their game with this. <laughs> I think so, this yeah. is incredible. Thank like, you. I don't think Garrett would win this year. <laughs> Probably not, no. I mean, if that water feature holds water I'm in the hoping. end, that's, that's like a winning piece right there. Oh my gosh. Fingers crossed. All right, Hunter. Hello. How, how's it going? It's going. We have made progress since we talked to you last. I think last time we talked to you it was just a plain was foam, just foam background. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we have made progress. We ended up carving the foam and then we used Gorilla Glue to stick on a bunch of Terra Sahara here. And I think that made a kind of naturalistic background. And we ended up screwing in this log here into the background so that an animal can climb and it won't fall. And we might screw in a couple more pieces in the background, but that's to be determined. It's turning out great. Thank you. Oh, I can't wait to see when it's done. Hey. Tyler's playing with lights back here. Yes, I am. So look at it go. It's green now. Yeah. It's blue now. You can make it flash. Oh, we can have like a rave. Yeah. Oh, and somebody's flipping the lights off over there. Uh, that's <laughs> Bob. They just wanted to show off the light. I know. Right? Is it? Ooh. I'm back. I accidentally put too much silicone on. Oh. I think. Uh oh. Probably scraped some off. Well, I was gonna ask how's it going, but it yeah. seems like we're at a, uh, an important point. Great. Yeah. So I'm not gonna like permanently attach this yet, but basically this is gonna go about here. So you're gonna see the lights behind it. That is cool. Because cool. you can like change the colors and stuff. Oh. And then wow. like, and then we're gonna have the fogger kind of coming behind it. So there's fog coming down behind the sign. It comes uh, to the crack. That's yeah. cool. Really so that's the goal. Right. <laughs> I can't, yeah, I can't wait to Thank see you. it. Yeah, me too. Okay, <laughs> last but not least, halfway check-in. How's it going? It's going really well. I mean, it's oh, wow, are you done? done. Yeah. Whoa, just about. So I might do a couple of touch-ups here and there. Uh, I definitely need to take care of that dripping super glue over there. <laughs> yeah, the, the Gorilla Glue over here is, uh, yeah. you can just sprinkle some dirt on that. And... Yeah, the root stack is well anchored. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Okay, we have 
one hour left officially. Is anyone here already done with their build completely? Oh, one? Okay, one? Oh, that's it though. All right, we have a bit of work still to do. Okay, we have 15 minutes left. Wrap up your, your final projects, those final details. I don't think anybody's really paying attention. No, nope, they're all focused. They're yes. focused. <laughs> Okay, once everybody is finished with their builds, the final touch is signing them. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and we're done. Give your hands off the enclosures. <laughs> there we go. Good job, everyone. All right, let's see what these final enclosures look like. Hey guys, I'm John from Pangea Reptile, and I built this cage with my coworker Kevin Johnson, and we made a desert scape. And this desert scape is for small desert geckos, is what we had in mind. Um, also, small desert uh, skinks would also work well. We kind of started our tank build with universal rocks, and we used their background, and we had some nice contours with it, and then we added a nice centerpiece to it. Then we kind of went through and added our sticks. Uh, so these are ghost woods from Pangea Reptile, and then we also worked on a fireplace so this is kind of like a warm cozy area that's our heat spot on our heat spot we have the reptile systems gold infrared unit as you can see here we got a couple little caves and a nice little path and the caves are for the small geckos or skinks and then we also have some small succulents to give it a little color and those are also from Pangea the fireplace was one of the items that we brought we didn't quite bring the fireplace but we brought um, some LED coils and some charcoal and then when the lights turn off it glows in the dark I'd like to say thank you to Snake Discovery and all the sponsors for sponsoring this event. Uh, this was a wonderful time that uh, we had here at the Snake Discovery Build-Off. If you liked our build of this desert scape, please vote for us. Hi, I'm Mariah Healy with Reptifiles, and today I built a Southern Utah themed desert enclosure. I decided to go with the common chuckwalla, Soromelis ater, as my inspiration for this enclosure. So uh, we have a live plant and then a lot of rock and desert looking wood. And this actually is from Utah. This is sage wood and that was my special item that I brought to add some texture to the landscape. Uh, we have a stone basking spot over here. Stone is my favorite thing to use for basking uh, because it absorbs heat and so that you get warmth from above and below for your reptile. And I use this beautiful hollow universal rocks, artificial rock. And then I use Biodude products for the substrate. So uh, you have Terra Sahara, pumice rock here for a little bit of color, plus the other super grow for a little bit of extra desert look. I would also like to highlight the highlight of this enclosure, which is this beautiful sky blue background. I did this for the first time with my oscillated skink build, and I liked it so much that I decided to contribute some blue paint to the pot here so that I could use it. The cool thing about blue paint, aside from looking like a beautiful open desert sky, is that it reflects light. So instead of a dark background, you have a light background, which reflects the light that is coming into the enclosure and makes it a brighter experience for your reptiles and more pleasant to look at as well. Anyway, if you think this enclosure is hella rad, vote for me. Joe with JSA Reptiles, this is my wife Sheena. Uh, we built this enclosure for any mid-sized snake, corn snake, king snake, maybe small python. Um, we used universal rock. They picked a big rock, it actually ended up having to cut it in half because it was too big for the enclosure. Used the bio dude substrate and then added the cork hides. So we got one hide more on the cooler side, kind of more in the medium and then a basking spot on top. Um, we got the bio dude lights and then the uh, reptile systems heat lamp. Um, the bio dude substrate, we use the Gorilla Glue and uh, foam on the back and just added the plants. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bob Bledsoe with Green Room Pythons, and I built an enclosure for a gargoyle gecko. I like an enclosure that tells a story. So I had a custom piece designed and 3D printed where uh, we have a, a building. This is kind of like Jumanji and 
Ghostbusters. All in one. So we have a we have a building that's being overgrown. It's kind of breaking down and, and going back into the earth and it's being overgrown by the jungle. And it's got some gargoyles on it. This gargoyle is still intact, it's really cool. But then there's one that's busted off and come to life. And so the gargoyle gecko that's living in the enclosure is that gargoyle, just like Ghostbusters. So we've got that. I've got BioDude Terra Firma in here, which I love to use because you don't need a drainage layer, it's fantastic. And I've covered it in moss because it adds to that overgrown look. And uh, I got a bunch of plants in here. I have T-positive albino isopods and springtails, super cool. I did my background, I did the Gorilla Glue and uh, I used kind of a mixture of different substrates for the background. You guys use gloves when you do that. Use gloves because, come on, <laughs> think about it, all right? What else do I wanna say? I think that's, I think that's all I wanna say about that. Perfect. <laughs> How's it going everybody? I'm Dave Kaufman from Dave Kaufman's Reptile Adventures. This is an enclosure that uh, is about a year in the making. Right after last year's competition where I won, I won by a lot, I won every state, I actually had fake electors sent to... Uh, anyway, the point is, is that right after that competition, Clint Laidlaw from uh, Clint's Reptiles called me up and he was like, I want to be your partner next year. I was like, yes! So for a year, Clint and I have been talking on the phone, talking about what we were going to do. We have created the opening scene of Indiana Jones. There's a couple of really cool things about this. So if you've seen that opening scene, you know that Indiana Jones in the middle of the Peruvian Amazon goes into this cave to find the fertility idol. And look at this, it, it can come off. I've never really seen this up close. I mean, this is like so incredible incredibly cool. Oh yeah, yeah, Clint is in there. Yes, oh yeah, we almost got like spikes shooting at us. But if you remember, there was a uh, archeologist that preceded Indiana Jones named Forrester and he got a spike right through his eye and that's what we see right here. Up here, I, I took a vine, stripped it and then made Indy's whip up there and then we have the idol. And this is a really cool piece that Clint built. It's actually a hide. This is hollow so your snake can actually hide in there. And then right over here, we have the big boulder that rolled down at the end of that scene. The coolest thing about this though is that I hid something in this enclosure, in the substrate, that the winner is going to be able to be their own archeologist and find in this enclosure. The idea with this is to keep communal species of snakes in this because as Indiana Jones said, why does it have to be snakes? As you guys know, over the past couple of years, I've taken some liberties with my enclosure design. This year, I'm really proud of this, like really proud of this. So I wanna thank Clint for helping me out with it. And if you like Indiana Jones and you wanna see what's buried in this enclosure somewhere, vote for me and win this thing. Thank you so much to Emily and Ed and all the sponsors. We are doing this build off and coming together to draw your attention to supporting US Ark. On my build, I love the story of good and evil in the Lord of the Rings. I made the Shire in Bilbo's house. Of course, all is peaceful, but the ring is here, a food dish for your reptile. And as hard times come along, we have fighters at US Ark fighting for our rights to keep reptiles. I have tried to create different enrichment places for your reptile. You can put any tropical frog, snake, or gecko in this enclosure. All houses can be removed and the build is bioactive. We use isopods, springtails, biodude soil, and lots of donated things. Thank you. I am with the people I admire and try to be like, to learn from and to learn from you. Thank you so much and um, please support USR. P.S. Sauron's eye is fixed on the hobbits, but even the smallest person can change the world forever. So this is a 3D printed hide and the rest of it here is styrofoam. This is wood and uh, this was our personal item that we brought. And if you like our enclosure, please vote for us. Hi, I'm Morgan from Ontario Reptile Rescue, and this is the enclosure that I built today. I based it off of where I grew up and where I consider my home, which is Bancroft, Ontario. So this is kind of an homage to the first place I was introduced and fell in love with reptiles and amphibians for the first time. The background is the piece that I brought from home with me. I made it out of spray foam and painted it with dry lock and sealed it all up. Uh, Bancroft, Ontario is known as the mineral capital of Canada, so I kind of wanted to just make sure the feature of the rock wall was the main focus of this, because it just reminds 
kinds of meat foam. At the bottom, we have a water reservoir, so it'll be good for a moderate to high humidity species. It'll also act as a water dish or a, so uh, like a soaking area. Uh, many of the materials that I used, I chose to deconstruct and then reconstruct into something else. So we have some mangrove root here, and then I deconstructed the exoterra vines, and I hot glued them to make kind of like a, a maple tree almost of sorts. We have some cork bark here from Cork Fanatics that will provide a hiding place. I built this in mind with salamanders, but honestly it can be good for pretty much any medium to high humidity species. So dart frogs or even newts or salamanders. Over here we have kind of a, a faux tree with some pothos coming out of it. And in the back we have the Pangea vines, which I snipped with some wire cutters and added to the background to kind of resemble plant roots coming through the rock wall. And I think it adds some pretty great depth. So I would just like to say a big thank you to Emily and Ed for hosting this event and to all of our sponsors for making this event possible. It's been absolutely incredible and we couldn't do it without you. Hey everybody, my name is Hunter Hauk and this is the enclosure that I built here today at the build-off. So this enclosure wasn't made with a specific species in mind, but rather versatility amongst a lot of different arid species. So you have all these climbing opportunities so that something like a bearded dragon could go up and bask, but you could also have something like a king snake that really likes to bury itself in the substrate. I used lots and lots of wood here, and I also used Terra Sahara from the Bio Dude, and I think it just pulls it together with all these plants and the wood and everything to make a really cool naturalistic enclosure. It's something that won't hold too much humidity, which is nice for a species like that. But like I mentioned, most arid species would really find themselves at home in that enclosure. I nearly forgot to mention my personal item, which was this suitcase, which before all of them went in this enclosure contained 47 pounds of slate rock. So you should definitely come and enter to win this enclosure. And if you like it, vote for it. Hello, I'm Dan the Turtle Man. First, thank you to Emily and Ed for letting me come out. Um, I've never built a vivarium in my life. I work with turtles, Turtle Man, and there's only like one or two species that live in a vivarium. So I decided to go with the second greatest species in the world, although not a reptile, very near and dear to my heart. And of course, that is the item that I brought, the sea monkey. I have been incubating these eggs for the last uh, roughly 24 hours since I got through security at the airport and I've been warming them using my body heat um, and making sure to shake the enclosure to oxygenate the water roughly every 10 minutes on a three hour flight. The people on either side of me, because of course I got the middle seat, were very concerned with my mental well-being. Regardless, I made this enclosure for them. Uh, you know, you can put other reptiles in it, I suppose. However, when those small sea monkeys evolve and eventually, I assume, leave the water, hence the name monkey, they can use these branches to swing around and go from limb to limb, all the branches, uh, and they can kind of make that their home. It is the largest sea monkey uh, enclosure probably in the world. I'm just going to say that it is. And yeah, I put a lot of heart and soul into it. And by that, I mean, I spent four hours building the background and an hour putting this all together. Um, vote for me if you want to. I, it's pretty good. Hey guys, my name is Tyler Ruggie and I built this enclosure with Maddie Smith and we are Celestial Exotics. And we did a Pokemon theme. So for our broad item, we made this background and we're going for kind of like an abandoned Pokemon gym vibe. So we have some LED lights, you can see them kind of flickering, they're waterproof, so you don't have to worry about them getting messed up by the fog. And yeah, it's just like a Pokemon theme, and as far as like a species goes, you can keep any humidity-loving species in there, it's obviously like a lot of moss and fog. Um, you could keep like a Trico in there. As a hatchling, they get like a foot tall, so... Uh, only one though, they're solitary as everyone knows, but if you want something that you can cohab, you can keep like two to three Snivy in there for like the first couple weeks of their lives. They get like three feet tall before they evolve, so can't stand there its whole life, but yeah. Uh, if you love Pokemon and if you love snake discovery, you'll vote for us. Wow. What I... a Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> And these enclosures are top notch this year. Yes, they are. Everybody up to their game yet again this year. It's insane. I honestly don't know who's gonna win. Yeah, we usually have a small inkling of like one or two enclosures that's like, those are definitely gonna be top one, two, or three. Yeah. This year, I don't even think I can pop, uh, guess top six, seven. 
<laughs> I have no idea what's gonna happen here. But basically now it's up to you, the viewers, to decide what is the best enclosure that was built in this year's build-off. And the way to vote is to go to the Snake Discovery Community tab and we will have a link to a poll that has attached pictures of all the enclosures you have until the end of this weekend, Sunday night, to vote. And Monday morning, we will know who the top three winners are. Yep. And those winners, along with the top three winners from the first two years, next year are gonna go head to head in the championship round enclosure build-off 2024. Yes. That's gonna be an epic year. And so at the end of this weekend, we will know who the final three champions are going to be. Yep. So yeah, now you're probably wondering what is going to happen yeah. to these enclosures. What do we do with these sweet enclosures? Do we just take them home and put them in our home and <laughs> fill them with animals? Huzzah! It was all a ruse it for was. us to get new enclosures. <laughs> no, actually what's going to happen is we are going to raffle off all of these habitats and the leftover supplies yes. at our two-year anniversary for the zoo, if you can believe it. Three. Three? Two? No, two. 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 Yeah, the first yeah, one was on yeah, opening weekend. Years. That's yes. right. <laughs> so our second year anniversary for the zoo. I can't believe we've already been open now for two years. I thought we were at three. Yeah, right? Yeah, <laughs> man. Time moves oddly. Yes. Um, I can't believe we still have this much stuff. There's a lot still here. Like, I yeah. think Dan had 90% of all of this under his table. He just hoarded it he all. He just pulled it all and set it under, which we might have to do a little bit of a rule about that in the I future. Only grab what you need at <laughs> yes. the moment or something. Leave the rest on the know. table. We have some tweaking to do. And we have some twists in mind for the championship yes. round next year. Uh, but yeah, we are going to be raffling off all of this stuff Labor Day weekend. So not this weekend, but next weekend right here at Snake Discovery. And every paid admission into our zoo will get tickets, some freebie tickets to use for some hourly raffles yep. that we'll have throughout the day. Stuff. We will be doing hourly raffles Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and if we still have some, Monday, Labor Day itself. Yep. And for the grand prizes... All of these guys. Yes. So many grand prizes, 10 beautiful grand prizes. We will be drawing those live at 5 p.m. Sunday of Labor Day weekend. Yep. So I can't wait to see who's gonna get what. I yes. can't wait to see who is going to win this year's competition. Ready for our anniversary event? No. It's gonna come up before we oh know it. Oh it's like a week, it's a month away. And <laughs> yes. Oof. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to our incredibly generous sponsors for donating so many things this yeah, year. all of this. Yeah. So, Gosh, much. so much. All the proceeds for the uh, auctions, by the way, for the leftover supplies and for the grand prizes, because you can buy additional tickets after getting your freebies for going in the zoo, all those proceeds will be getting donated to US ARC. So it's all going to a really good cause. Also, just one more thing as far as sponsors, that box of garbage is over there. Yeah, brought it up. Zoomed actually did send oh, 10 yeah. light fixtures, 10 of these things. Yes, six so, of them arrived today, the yes. day after build off. So, so everyone that was meant to come with one, which it looks like Dave's needs one still, yes. is going to be coming with a Zoomed. They will hood. all come with a full hood. We yep. will make sure if you win one of the enclosures, it'll come it'll with a hood. It'll be well lit is what we ensure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support. Thank you sponsors. Thank you to all the participants who took the time out of their day to travel yes. here here to compete and to hang out afterwards yeah to keep us awake till three in the morning <laughs> it was a long night last night <laughs> but that is okay so worth it thank you everybody for watching and now go vote for your go favorite enclosure not by popularity yeah vote for your actual vote favorite for enclosure. your actual favorite enclosure